Joining me now on Skype is Dr. John Gravenstein, editor at the Immunization Action Coalition, which works to increase immunization rates and prevent disease by creating and distributing educational materials for healthcare professionals and for the public. Dr. Gravenstein, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. So tell me, what do we know at this point about the timing of the FDA announcement as it relates to the shipment of the initial doses? So as your uh, clip showed, uh, the advisory committee to the FDA voted uh, positively for the vaccine yesterday. The FDA is finishing its final reviews now. Uh, it could be that the FDA announces the emergency use authorization tonight or tomorrow. That's sort of the best guess at, at this point. Uh, as we know, both the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine require two doses. Could you talk about that and maybe some of the challenges that that could present in making sure that people are fully covered? Sure. If you think about flu shots, it's kind of easy to just come in once, get the dose, and you're finished. In this case, you have to come back for a second dose to get the full effect of the vaccine, and that's either two or three, or excuse me, three or four weeks after the first dose. Um, so it's a, it's an inconvenience, but it's a, what we're delighted with is that the efficacy, the effectiveness of these vaccines is 95 uh, percent, which is really good. And that should uh, uh, take us a long way uh, in beginning to quell the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly promising. Uh, the CDC has provided guidance on who should actually receive the initial do doses, that is. But it looks like the governors will have the final say. So can you talk more about that? And does that mean that the priority list could actually vary from state to state? So what, th what the state health departments asked of the CDC was some flexibility. I mean, you think about uh, Rhode Island, which is, um, you know, pretty urban, and a, and a Wyoming that is uh, pretty rural. They need some flexibility in how they how they uh, get get things accomplished. But I think you're going to see a considerable amount of uh, similarity between the states. I certainly hope so. And in the priority groups are healthcare personnel, both uh, the clinical staff and the uh, housekeeping staff and food service. Everybody in that building uh, are included in that category. And then the adult residents of long-term care facilities, skilled nursing facilities, nursing homes. Uh, those sorts of people. They should be really top of the list. Uh, uh, something that we've been hearing about a lot this week, you know, earlier in the week, the U uh, in the UK, that is, two healthcare workers who both carried uh, adrenaline auto injectors had a history of allergic reactions. Well, they responded adversely to the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, that being said, what should people keep in mind regarding side effects uh, versus the safety concerns of vaccines? So, yeah, so those two particular cases are being uh, checked out in greater detail, looking for, you know, pull, pulling up their full me medical records to make sure it's understood. Uh, we know that the FDA has said that anybody with a, uh, a history of allergy to any of the components of the vaccine should not get it. That's, that's you know, fairly standard procedures. And, and what the, one of the things that the FDA is doing right now is finalizing the fact sheet that would explain the vaccine to anybody that it's offered to. And uh, so they're, they're working on, on the, what the final wording will be for that. Uh, something else I do want to discuss, and I'm sure I know you know this, uh, today drug makers Sanofi and GlaxoSmithKline said that their potential COVID-19 vaccines, well, they won't be ready until late next year because they need to improve the drug's effectiveness in older people. How significant do you think that is to the overall vaccine supply? It, it, it will delay some of the uh, uh, supply overall. This, that particular product is one that Catholics would be quite interested in because it does not involve cell lines of, with uh, remote fetal origins. Um, the, uh, so that's a little disappointing that, that there would be a delay with that product. But the other product that is of similar design is one from Novavax. So you, you all can you know, be watching and see how it progresses uh, through its clinical trials. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Gravenstein. We really appreciate your time today. Thanks very much.